Hey friends, welcome back. Here in the studio today, we're doing this dive into Texas family law. And one of the things I want to simplify for the viewers is conservatorship. What, what does that mean? And why do we use that word instead of parent? Well, we use that word because it is the appointment of and recognition of a protector. In Texas family law, that means the, the guardian or protector of a minor child. And that doesn't always get awarded to somebody who has a biological or familial relationship with that minor child. So, Instead of using the word parent, we use the word conservator. And there's three different types of conservatorship. There is a managing conservator, and essentially that's somebody who has the managing rights, healthcare, education, the right to give and receive information, the duty to give and receive information regarding things like healthcare, education, non-invasive surgical, etc. The backside of conservatorship has a component where one of the two, usually two, parents, spouses, not always spouses, are made, the one of the two is made a primary conservator or, or the way we jargony spell it out under our state law is a managing conservator with the right to designate the primary residence. But remember, conservator equals parent, you know, need to really know or define it any broader or more complicated than that. Managing conservator have equal rights. Managing parent with equal rights. One parent is going to be made the primary parent. And that's the parent with the right to designate the primary residence and to receive child support. After that, we have sole managing conservator, and that's usually awarded in those scenarios where there has been an, an incident of family violence that eliminates one parent's ability to, to be a managing conservator, right? You know, so you hit your kids, you're, you're not gonna be a managing conservator. You hit your wife, you jeopardize your ability to be a managing conservator because if you've committed family violence in the two years up to the time of the divorce and there's credible evidence of that, it's entirely possible that the court will find that it's in the best interest of the children not to have one parent be a managing conservator, the parent who committed the family violence. And that can go, you know, family violence due to drugs, alcohol, whatever. Those, those are all relevant factors. The Last stop on this stair step down is possessory conservator and possessory parent. These are usually the perpetrators of family violence. And not, it's not always the case, it's just most commonly. There are situations where somebody has a medical, right, they've got a medical problem, they have a debilitating bone disease, degenerative, some sort of degenerative nerve, whatever's going on with their body, and they are not physically capable of being a managing conservator. They just simply can't do it. Doesn't mean that they're bad people, and it doesn't necessarily mean they committed family violence. It means they got something going on with their health. The other parent needs to be the managing conservator with the right to designate the primary residence. They need to be the primary parent, in other words. But the soul, that, but that again gets us back to where we have a soul managing conservator 
one parent is in charge of all decisions, invasive health care decisions, mental health care decisions, can your kid enlist in the armed forces decisions. And then the possessory conservator has only the right to time with the child and only the right to receive information and has the obligation to pay child support. So these are complicated concepts, but I think if you break it down into the, replace the word conservator, we use it for a legal reason, but we just replace that with primary parent, joint managing parents with equal rights, and the only superior right is the right to designate that primary residence and receive child support. And then the other issue is the, the you know, family violence or other scenarios where you're gonna have a sole managing parent and a possessory parent. And those are, you know, the possessory parent is the one who's got the obligation to pay child support and only the right to time with the kids. More to come on Texas family law. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share. Hit me up with any questions or comments, and I'll see you for more in the studio on this next series.